Miigwech. 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 Tessa Quadrigan relies on an app to teach her son Cree, an opportunity she didn't have growing up in the child welfare system. It wasn't taught to me. It should have been. And I wish it was because now I try to give that to my son without really knowing it myself. She lost more than her language and a sense of culture. She's trying to regain her faith in others. It was isolating. And I was, I questioned a lot. Her experience with child welfare is multi-generational. She almost lost custody of her son as well when he was staying with his dad who died of an overdose. I needed to come and fight for him. So when I did, the first initial meetings were awful. <laughs> there was very, like, guilt shaming when I had been in shock myself. She believes it would have been different if her First Nation had been in control. That's the goal behind the new federal legislation. It seeks to keep children and youth with their families and in their communities. I'm hoping that this way, this new legislation will help that not happen to anybody else. Her expectations are high. So too are Miranda Egertson's, a friend who spent years bouncing through the system. It's a fight to, to feel secure every day. And she has and many questions about Bill C-92. It does sound hopeful, but like how many times has our people heard stuff like this? Cautiously, they wait to see changes. But with just 10 weeks left before the House breaks for summer and a looming federal election, politicians have little time to spare to push through this major reform. Olivia Stefanovich, CBC News, Ottawa. And some advocates also have concerns about how funding will work under this new arrangement. The federal government still has to sort that out with the provinces.